All right, folks, as promised, we're back and we're going to balance some more equations. So let me start off this video by doing one for you. Then I'm going to have you try some on your own. So let's see. We have 10 on this side in its solid form. Sodium hydroxide dissolved in water. It reacts to form. Um, this sodium 10 oxide compound and hydrogen gas. So let's see if we can balance this. We have 110 and 110. Uh, we have one sodium here, but two over there. So let's put a two in front of sodium to balance that on both sides. We have two oxygens here, and we now have two oxygens there. We have two hydrogens on the product side, and we now have two hydrogens on the product side. So it looks as though this equation balances. Let's see, raise some of these things, get them out of the way to see if simply by putting a 2 as a coefficient in front of sodium hydroxide does it for me. So 110, 110, 2 sodiums, 2 sodiums, 2 oxygens, 2 oxygens, 2 hydrogens, 2 hy yeah, I think we're done. So that wasn't too bad, was it? Alright, why don't you try the next one on your own. Pause the video, the next reaction, and then come back to the video and see how you did. All right, welcome back. All right, let's see, we have eight carbons on this side, so let's put an eight in front of CO2. We have 18 hydrogens, so let's put a nine in front of water, so that would give me 18 hydrogens on both sides. So it looks like my carbons are done, eight on both sides, and my hydrogens, I just have oxygens left. So what number are we gonna put in front of O2? Well, let's see. Don't we have 16 oxygens here, because we have 8 CO2s, and 9 more oxygens here, because I have 9 H2Os. 16 plus 9 is 25 oxygen atoms. So the question is, how do I get 25 on the reactant side? Well, it would be really nice if we could put 12 and a half right there in front of O2. That would give me 25 oxygen atoms on the reactant side, just like I have on the product side. But we balance these using small whole number coefficients. 12 and a half is not a whole number. So what are we going to do? Well, let's get rid of some of these things here and see if we can decide. It seems to me that I could make 12 and a half a whole number by doubling it, couldn't I? But if I doubled the number of O2s, wouldn't I have to double the number of everything else in this equation for it to balance? So let's, let's go ahead and double the number of oxygens. So instead of 12 and a half, let's give ourselves 25. And let's double the number of everything else. So that would mean I'd have 2 C8 H18, 16 carbon dioxides. Um, I forgot that number there, 18 waters. So if that's 16 carbons. 2 times 18, 36 hydrogens. 25 times 2, 50 oxygens. On this side, 16 carbons. We have 18 times 2, 36 hydrogens. And then let's see, for oxygens, I have 16 times 2 plus more, which is 50 Oxygen carbons are okay. Yeah, we did it. So those would be the 25. All right, try the next one on your own, and we'll see how you do. All right, welcome back. Let's see how you did on the next one. We have one aluminum here. Looks like there's two on this side, so let's put a two in front of Al. Two hydrogens and two hydrogens. That's not that bad. Oh, look, here's a polyatomic ion. Do you see how it travels as a group and there are three on that side? So let's put a three in front of H2SO4 so that gives me three sulfates on both sides. Now I know that messes up my hydrogens. I now have six, but I can fix that easily by putting a three in front of H2. So now everything should balance. Let's take a look. We have two aluminums on both sides, six hydrogens on both sides, three of these sulfates on 
both sides. It works. Now, what if I give you the equation in words instead of giving you the equation as a formula? Yeah, we're going to have to write the formulas down, aren't we? Well, that shouldn't be that hard. We know how to do that now. So, iron. Iron is Fe. Fluorine. What's the formula for fluorine? If you said F, you weren't paying attention earlier. Fluorine is one of my Brinkelhoff elements. So when it's in its elemental state, it comes in twos. And then we end up producing, so let's see, iron 3 means it's iron 3 plus. Fluorine's in group 17, it's negative 1. So that would be FeF3. All right. Now that we have the formulas, we can now balance the equation. One iron on both sides, two fluorines here, three fluorines here. So let's find a number that two and three have in common. Now how about six? Put a three in front of F2 over here, that gives me six fluorines, and put a two in front of Fe3 over here, which also gives me six fluorines. Okay? Alrighty. Well, let's try the next one. Sulfur trioxide plus water makes sulfuric acid. So sulfur trioxide, that's a non-metal to a non-metal, SO3, sulfur trioxide, plus water, H2O, reacts to form sulfuric acid. Oh, sulfuric. See, this is not binary, it's a ternary acid. And sulfuric must come from sulfate. So if you remember, sulfate's a polyatomic ion, SO4 2 negative, and there's always an H that acts like a metal with a 1 plus charge in these acids. So it looks like the formula would be H2SO4. So there are my formulas. Now all we've got to do is balance this. So let's see how it works. One sulfur, one sulfur. Three oxygens plus one more over here makes four, and I've got four on this side. Two hydrogens and two hydrogens, whoa! I don't think we have to do anything with that equation. It's balanced as it's written. That's nice. All right, try the next one on your own. And then come back to the video and see how I do it. Alrighty, welcome back. We have sodium solid, N, A, and magnesium iodide. Huh, magnesium iodide. Let's write the formula for that. We can erase this up here since we're done with it. So magnesium is in group 2. It's 2 positive. Iodide is in group 17. It's 1 negative. So the formula is Mg. I2. And it reacts to form sodium iodide. Sodium's in group 1, it's positive 1. Iodide is in group 17, it's negative 1. So NaI is one of our products. The other product is this plain old magnesium Mg. So there's our equation. Now we just need to balance it. So 1 sodium, 1 sodium. 1 magnesium, 1 magnesium, 2 iodines, 1 iodine. So I need to put a 2 in front of sodium iodide. Now that changes my sodiums to 2. So I can put a 2 in front of sodium there. And that balances the equation. All right, one more on today's video. A little shorter video than the last one for you. Here we go. Try that on your own, then come back to the video and see how you did. All right, vanadium, elemental vanadium is just V. Oxygen, did you write O2 this time? Yeah, that's a diatomic element. And we made vanadium 5 oxide. So vanadium 5, doesn't that mean it's vanadium 5 plus? And oxide, that's in group 16, so that's 2 negative. So it looks like it would be V. 2 to give me 10 positives, and O5 to give me 10 negatives. So now let's balance this. Um, 
I'm not going to balance the vanadiums right away. Let me take care of my oxygens first. Um, 5 and 2. Common multiple is 10. Let's put a 2 in front of V2O5 to give me 10 oxygens. And a 5 in front of O2 to give me 10 oxygens. Then I have 4 vanadiums, and I can fix that by putting a 4 in front of the vanadium there. Okay? All right. So we're going to have a chance to do lots of these in class. Uh, for you to practice and get really, really good at this. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.